Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. It's actually two knives. This is the Adam Purvis Primordial and the Adam Purvis uh, Primordial 2 or MK2 I believe is how they say it. Uh, two very, very interesting knives. I'm doing them together because, you know, it's looking like this one is the newer one and is sold out at the moment. Now I don't know if he's going to keep doing these. but this one, to my knowledge, is long gone, and I figured I could review each of them and at the same time talk about the differences between the two and what I like about this guy over uh, the original here. We're going to turn these just a little bit. Uh, these knives were sent to me by two different gentlemen, and that's at Digital Gutter Snipe on Instagram and at Hunter underscore Leaf 74. Please give them a follow. It's because of people like them that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. It's also because of my generous patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me during this time. If you'd like to get your hands on some of those cool stickers, follow the link down in the description. The support would mean the world to me. Let's go ahead and uh, get a measurement of each knife. The uh, initial primordial here coming in at about seven inches overall. Is that right? That's a little more than that. It's about seven and a... Is it seven and a quarter? It's just shy of seven and a quarter. The Primordial 2 coming in just shy of 8 at about 7.8. Blade length on the initial Primordial coming in at about 7 and, and I'm sorry, 3 and an 8. <laughs> and blade length on the uh, Primordial 2 coming in at about 3 and a half. Whereas cutting edge coming in, yeah, again at about 3, yeah, about 3 and an 8. And then cutting edge on the Primordial 2 coming in at about 3 and a half. That was the clunkiest way to go about measuring those two. I am so sorry about that, but hopefully everybody was able to decipher what the heck I was talking about. How about some size comparisons with some other knives? We'll actually put the first Primordial up top and this one down low. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue is coming in at eight inches overall, very similar to the Primordial 2. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3, which is all the way up here. Spyderco Para 3 coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. How's the action on this guy? So these guys are not manufactured in the United States, but man, do they have excellent uh, just excellent action. This guy's got a little bit of a weaker detent, which I think is appropriate considering it is a, uh, it's a it's a non-flipper. It could probably have stood to be a little bit heavier, but considering these aren't really available anymore, you know, by a long shot, I don't know that it really matters at this point. This guy has excellent detent. It's also a flipper. So you can engage it the same way as the other one, right? But this guy, this guy's got a much heavier detent and there's, it, it's so easy to engage this slot up here that, you know, truthfully, this is how I would have preferred it either way. Whether you are, it's going to be a little hard for me to do it left-handed, but I can do it, right? Left-handed, right-handed, you want to use the forward flick. It's a little bit tougher. It I can be done. Let's see if I can figure it out on camera here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It can be done. Truthfully, the flipper tab is perfect and the reverse flick is perfect. And then on this guy, pinch opening is just fine. Doing the forward flick is kind of harder and kind of easier because it's got a lighter detent and then the reverse flick is just fine. No problem. Definitely the better detent of the two is this guy. Uh, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. Get out my handy dandy Wea magnetic driver and Wea bit selector. Two items that are extremely inexpensive and extremely recommendable. You can find them both down in the Amazon store that I reference at the beginning of every single video. Just pull open the store and look for knife maintenance. So this is a T8. I'm going to guess that uh, this is going to be a T8 pivot here, and that is accurate. How about the handle screws on this guy? Are they also T8? Ooh, they are. Pocket clip screw, T8. Over travel stop and lock bar stabilizer screw, T8. Those are all going to be T8. This guy's got the adjustment head on the back, and it is a T8. How about down here? Are we going to get lucky? Oh, oh no. Those are T6. Let's go ahead and test just to be sure. T6. Stumble through this. 
and there's the overlay and the pocket clip. Or I'm sorry, the uh, screws on this guy back here and the pocket clip screws are all T6. So unfortunately on the Primordial 2, <laughs> the screws are T6. I would have just preferred that he stayed with T8. It's never a deal breaker. It's just easier to, um, you know, to um, confidently uh, uh, loosen or tighten those, those heads with a T8. And also I don't have to switch out between the pivot and the, the, um, the handle screws on uh, disassembly, but it is what it is. It's not that big of a deal. Just use caution if you're going to disassemble your knife. How about carry profile? So both of these, I believe, are very similar in thickness. Um, yeah, they are. I mean, it, it, up there, the top is a little bit different, but at the bottom and at the top, I believe they're very similar. At the bottom, actually, the Primordial 2 is a little bit thinner. The top maximum thickness... Uh, this guy is actually just ever so slightly thicker. That's interesting. Obviously, this one is a bigger knife, right? So it's, I mean, there's more material here. It's going to weigh more. Carry profile up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3 two knives that have awkward carry profiles that nobody ever complains about. I wonder if we can get them all to fit. It's a different type of review since I'm doing them all together. PM, uh, Para, uh, here, let's do like this. We'll move these guys over here. I'll let you see. And then we'll do these guys right here. So as you can see, I mean, the smaller one is obviously more comparable to the to the pair of three, the larger one to the, the PM2. Nowhere near as tall, even considering this guy has a flipper tab. And truthfully, even up against the pair of three, uh, the primordial two here, it's really not that not that long. I mean, overall, yeah, the carry profile on both of these guys is just excellent. I have no issue with that. I'm also very pleased with the weight, at least the feeling of it. I haven't actually weighed them yet, but I'll let you guys see here. Primordial coming in at 3.07 ounces, perfectly acceptable considering blade length. And the Primordial 2 coming in at 3.67, again, a perfectly acceptable weight. You're looking at a combination of titanium and carbon fiber on both. Uh, and then there's actually some milling done that goes all the way through to the, the scales on this guy. This guy's solid. On the inside here of this one, you can see nothing's milled out, but obviously it didn't need to be. I mean, I don't need it to be less than three and a half ounces. I'm perfectly okay with that considering how much usable cutting edge I'm getting out of it. So that's perfectly acceptable to me. I have no, no issue with that whatsoever. The pocket, I'm sorry, the flipper tab on this guy sticks out a little bit, but it's not, I don't, I don't think it's too prominent or anything like that. If you're carrying something else in your pocket, perhaps that would bother you. But, uh, you know, for the most part, if you're carrying this knife by itself, it's not really going to be that big of a deal. Have we covered everything there? Yeah, I think so. So these obviously come in a wide variety of different options. You're going to see a lot of different versions out there. You're probably also noticing that this guy has the uh, Timascus clip. So um, on pre-order, that was an option for an extra $100. The base price of this guy, I believe, was about $220. And the base price of this guy was about $260. Um, there were different anodizing options for the titanium bolster or that it's actually the frame and then it's got a scale or an overlay on top of it. And then you had a, on the two, you had a choice between carbon fiber, marbled carbon fiber in this case, as you can see up close, very beautiful. Uh, and then you had uh, um, a couple different G10 options, I believe. Um, there was also a um, Damasteel variant. I saw a picture of it on DLT. That one was substantially more expensive at about $425. Um, but yeah, you had a bunch of different options at the beginning. So anybody trying to hunt one of these down, there are quite a few um, different versions of them out there. So, I mean, to make a, a certain part of this review a little bit shorter, just because we've got two knives here, all the way around, everything is nicely rounded down. This guy's got a little bit of a pointy tip up here, not really a part of the knife that you're going to engage. Truthfully, I, I, I got this guy first sent to me. And uh, I was like, wow, this is really nice. The action is really good. It's in impressively, like insanely smooth. It's got the garage stops, right? It's got a pretty thick blade stock, actually. Let's measure those real quick. Uh, blade stock thickness on the Primordial coming in at about 157 thousandths. And on the Primordial 2, we're coming in a little bit thinner. 136,000, 135,000, something like that. Uh, I think that's a, an improvement. I don't think it really needs to be 
that thick on this guy. It's not really that big of a deal. This guy comes down to an okay cutting edge. I mean, it's, it's fairly thick, honestly, down behind the edge. It's got a clip point blade, beautiful swedge up top. The flat carries out about 65% or so out the length. Um, tip, I wouldn't say it's a delicate tip for a clip point, but, uh, you know, there's not as much material there as you would normally expect on a blade stock like this and perhaps like a drop point blade. This guy's got a thinner blade stock, the same sort of blade style. Definitely does come out to a thinner tip, right? So you might have to worry about that a little bit, but it's much thinner behind the edge. It's not an absolute laser beam, but it's definitely thinner behind the edge. Blade seal on these guys, I believe, I believe is M390. Um, yeah, actually on this guy, it says it. Thank you, <laughs> printing for saving me. I can never remember. In some cases, these knives, these types of knives will use S35VN, but it is M390 and that's of course very welcome. Um, I like the blade on this guy better for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's a little bit thinner. So your standard EDC tasks, I think are gonna be uh, just, just more um, of a, it's gonna be a more comfortable experience to pass through material with this blade. Um, number two, there's more cutting edge because it's bigger, so I like that. Not everybody's going to really, you know, care about that, especially if you're somebody who likes a smaller knife, right? Number three, it's not a recurve. Some people really like recurves. I don't. I don't like them. I don't like to sharpen them, and I honestly don't like them aesthetically as much. I mean, it's a recurve is, it still has its own pretty form, but I just prefer, you know, a, a blade that's straight all the way across. I like how it looks better. I think it flows with the design better, even if there is curvature in other parts of the knife. And of course, they're just, um, you know, more pleasant to sharpen. Uh, both knives utilize, well, actually, no, I'm sorry. This guy utilizes the internal, the garage stops, and this guy has a regular stop pin. I would have preferred, I always like to see this garaging with stops. Um, I just, I just think that's neat. I mean, it doesn't serve that much of an advantage. When you have the pegs on both sides, they rest against the frame. Whereas, you know, on a design like this, it's the blade resting against the stop. So there's a little bit more rigidity, not a whole lot. It's just ever so slightly considering, you know, the stops are resting on either side of the frame. Not a deal breaker. In this case, the stop pin is exposed and there's an enormous amount of shouldering. And that's nice. There's still a lot of surface contact and, uh, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Um, we have a bead blasted blade and we've got a satin finished blade. It's my understanding there were a couple of different finishes that were available between these two knives. The only pictures I've seen of the different finishes on this guy, the number two, uh, is a sort of uh, DLC finish and then this satin finished blade. Both look cool. I mean, the, the DLC one with the um, anodized um, uh, sort of bolster there on the titanium or the titanium frame looks really, really nice. This standard version actually is probably exactly how I would have picked it up. Just marble carbon fiber, uh, the tumbled titanium and the satin blade. Very beautiful. Uh, you make full use of the blade or the cutting edge there. There's no forward choil. Flipper tab is just excellent. You can light switch it. You can kind of diagonally push button it. All the corners and everything are nicely knocked down. So there's no uncomfortable spot on the flipper tab at all. The jimping is in the right place. It's easy to engage. It's easy to, you know, break the detent, deploy it, and it fires hard. I mean, these are insanely smooth. Both of them feel about the same in terms of smoothness. I kind of like this show side pivot a little bit better. Um, it is not a proprietary pivot because the adjustment side's right there. This side has the adjustment side on both. So I don't know why. I just kind of think that looks nice. Both have these contoured um, bolsters. This one's got a little bit more, you know, angular sort of chamfering going on here. That's fine. I mean, you know, some people like a little bit more business. Some people like this. I, I kind of prefer this. The seam between the uh, bolster and the uh, marble carbon fiber is, it's okay. In some spots, you know, it's a little bit up or down. And I, I don't know if that's a product of marble carbon fiber or what. Sometimes with marble carbon fiber, you get um, some voids. And honestly, yeah, there's a couple here and there. That's kind of a product of, of that material. You know, um, the, the way that it's made, uh, it's just, you can expect to see some voids in there sometimes, you know. To get completely voidless marbled carbon fiber, at least right now as of the time of this video, I, I feel like it's either luck of the draw or you have to pay a lot more money for them to pick out a section of the block or the, the plate, you know, that doesn't have any in there. I, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm guessing, um, but I have heard that, you know, that you can get voidless or it's been advertised as voidless marble carbon fiber and, you know, it's not really that big of a deal. A lot of people don't like the eyesore. It's tiny little specks in it. It really, if it, if I was seeking out a knife with marbled carbon fiber, a word that has a lot of syllables and I seem to be saying a lot and uncomfortably 
a large amount. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know that I would really care that much. My uh, Riot Jack and Damasteel had the stuff, and that was a six to seven hundred dollar knife, and it had some of that in there. I realize that knife's a few years old now, but it just really didn't bother me. You know, it's not going to make a difference in terms of structural integrity, so it's okay. Screw holding in the uh, overlay of the scale, and then you've got two screws back here. Titanium backspacer sandwiched between, the, you know, the rest of the frame and the titanium. And then on this side, a beautiful, beautiful Timascus clip, um, which is something I would have opted for. I understand that's $100 for a pocket clip. I don't care. I think it looks really cool. Your standard pocket clip is going to look more like this and just be titanium. The shape of the clip kind of bothers me a little bit. Um... I, it goes okay with the design. It just bothers me a little bit. It's a little bit pointy uh, at the end, both on the Timascus guy and on this guy. Um, it would have been nice if that was knocked down a little bit. But in practice, you know, my hand doesn't engage in a way where I'm really feeling that. It's pretty flat and smooth on the surface, so it's not that big of a deal. Getting, getting it over your pants pocket, I think, will be just fine. It's flat enough that it's not going to grab on anything. Both knives carry about right here. A little bit sticking up out of your pocket. I still wouldn't call it a shallow carry clip. Just fine. This guy's got one screw in it. This guy's got two screws in it. I don't know that it really makes a difference. Both seem to be completely and totally solid. Plenty of uh, pocket clip retention on both of them. No big deal. Uh, both of them have steel lock bar inserts that double as over travel stops. You can see there on this guy, we're locking up at something like, excuse me, I bumped the camera, 40%. And on this guy, we're locking up, I mean, it's a much thicker blade stock, so it's locking up at something like 30% or, so, or whatever. Um, both knives appear to be completely centered, and both knives are locking up absolutely solid. I mean, absolutely solid. No blade play, up, down, left, or right. Both of these are great knives, honestly. I mean, I mean, for the money, just right up, I can tell you, without going over the nitpicks, yeah, these are both worth the money. Excellent. In, in terms of materials, build quality, the grind, um, yeah, I mean, $220 if you, I mean, that's what this guy originally went for. I mean, but, and actually, I mean, it's hard to say, it's like, well, are they worth the money? Because it seems like right now at the moment you can't get these guys. If you can find them in perfect condition for exactly the prices that I brought up, do I think they're worth that? Yeah, I think so. Little nitpicks. Um, this guy's got T6 screws. That bothers me. Um, I'm not going to nitpick the stop. You know, the, the stop pin's just fine. There's no issue there. Pocket clip is a little bit pointy. Would like to have seen that not be so pointy. Um, this guy's got a recurve. I, I don't like recurves. The detent's a little bit soft on this guy. Uh, versus the bigger one. And ergonomically, we didn't really talk about that. This guy's very comfortable, but I am very much the size of my hand. It's not, I don't have a massive hand, but I wear an XL glove, right? So a, lo a slightly larger than normal hands, right? That's a little bit uncomfortable for me. This guy fits perfectly. Boy, is this a good feeling knife. And it's a good looking knife. The improvements from this guy to this guy, uh, aesthetically, definitely prefer this guy. I like the extra cutting edge. I like the extra blade length, uh, blade, blade length. I like the extra size of the knife overall. And I love that it has a flipper tab with a heavier detent. It's just something that I really, really like. It's very easy to manipulate. Fidget factor on this guy is just great. Everything works out correctly. And uh, I, you know, I really like the pocket clip on this guy. Some people would spring for the extra, you know, the money on that clip. Some people wouldn't. Um, like I said, you know, you can't pick these up. Do I think that they're good knives? Yes. Do I think they're good knives for the money that they were asking initially? Yes, I do. But I like this one a lot more. Both good. Primordial MK2, I guess is what they call it. The Primordial 2, uh, I think is a better knife. In fact, that's a, that's a, this is a really excellent knife. If that had T8 screws on it <laughs> and that pocket clip was not quite so sharp, you know, ah, uh, man, I mean, this this would have really, really just been like, I mean, and those are teeny tiny little nitpicks, but I really, really, I like them both, but I really, really like this guy. I hope that uh, it's being emphasized properly there. This was a little bit of a stumbly uh, review, guys, and that's because I don't normally review two knives at the same time, but it just seemed appropriate given the, the case with these right here. Um, so that I hope that you, you know, at least got something out of this. I hope that, um, you know, you were mildly entertained. Um, but, uh, you know, if you were looking for one of these knives, I hope, um, you know, I helped you make a decision or... Hope to, uh, I hope I offered a little bit of clarification anyway. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.